a really vibrant story of starting in this very desperate situation, fighting and scratching and clawing for respect and acceptance, and then building themselves up here in Denver. The Irish community in Denver has a long and rich history, but to really tell their tales, we need to go up about 5,000 feet in elevation. The Irish story in Colorado really does begin in Leadville, and that's because the silver rush there that began in about 1877 attracted thousands of Irish immigrants. And so the Irish were very working class, the, the men were mostly miners, the single women were domestic servants, but they established a, an important cultural space, and that, that involved the labor movement. Many of the Irish immigrated to the United States to escape famine in Ireland. While many moved to cities on the East Coast and Chicago, others came to Leadville, which offered employment opportunities working in the silver mines during the Silver Rush. Often working under brutal conditions in the mines, the Irish workers led two separate strikes, one of which took place in 1880 and was led by Michael Mooney. They weren't asking for anything terribly radical. They, they wanted a raise from three to four dollars a day. They wanted a, an eight hour work day. They were typically working 10. 5,000 miners walked out of the mines and paraded through Leadville in silence and declared Mooney their leader. He was deeply respected. He was 28 years old. Mooney even gave a speech at 14th and Lawrence in the hopes of garnering support for the effort. But the strike in 1880 ultimately failed. This coupled with the silver crash in 1893 forced many of the Irish community to move and many chose Denver as their destination. Strong in their Catholic faith, the Irish community in Denver established a legacy upon their settlement through the building of places of worship. Sacred Heart on Larimer Street, what used to be St. Leo's here on our on Auraria campus, Annunciation, which is in Northeast Denver. Regis University, the Sisters of Loretto. So that's the footprint of the Leadville Irish on the Denver Irish community. And so the, the two are really inseparable. While their places of worship were spread around the city, they settled where the jobs were, with many continuing as laborers just as they had been in Leadville. So they were close to the railroad tracks where their jobs were and the, the brickyards, many of them worked the brickyards. For the women, it was domestic work overwhelmingly. Many of the Irish community were concentrated in present-day Lodo, Union Station, and Auraria, with Auraria being key to many important contributions from the Irish. In 1859, Owen Goldrick established the first school in Denver, located on 12th Street between Larimer and Market. He was later appointed as the first superintendent of Arapahoe School District, a precursor to today's Denver Public Schools. Many Latino and Chicano communities settled in Auraria as well, and there is evidence of solidarity between these and the Irish community. Irish-born John Kernan Mullen, a wealthy businessman and philanthropist, donated his home in Auraria for the Hispanic community to use as a place of worship. He was also a major donor during the construction of St. Cajetans, which became a permanent place of worship for the Hispanic community that still stands today on the Auraria campus. Mullen was also key in establishing the Mount St. Vincent's Home for Children, the J.K. Mullen Home for the Aged, now known as the Little Sisters of the Poor, as well as the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. Many prominent Irish Denverites contributed to this as well, including J.J. Brown and his wife, Molly. But for the working class Irish in Denver, many were able to work their way up the social ladder, thus setting the table for the next generation of Irish Denverites to continue the climb. Immigrants mainly who worked in, in, as domestics, they, they learned a kind of social capital of, of, from wealthy families. They learned etiquette, they learned posture, they learned vocabulary, they learned the importance of education. These skills were then passed on to their children. And so as we get closer to the turn of the century, the second generation, the third generation, we see a clear rise to the middle class. The police force is an example of that. Many Irish American women become teachers, nurses, 
Mary Coyle Chase, who grew up in a poor Irish Catholic family in the Baker neighborhood, worked as a reporter for the Rocky Mountain News at the age of 18. She later went on to be a successful playwright, winning a Pulitzer Prize in 1945 for Harvey, a story about a man who has a friendship with an unseen, six-foot-tall rabbit. A feature film version starring Jimmy Stewart was also made. Denver elected its first Irish Catholic mayor, Thomas Currigan, in 1962. Mayor William McNichols was Denver's longest serving mayor and contributed many important additions to our cityscape, including the 16th Street Mall, the Performing Arts Center, and the Auraria Campus. Denver's Irish history is rich, and we celebrate it every year with one of the largest parades in the U.S. But it's important to remember the humble beginnings of the Irish community in our state. For more stories, check out Denver's YouTube page or tune in to denver8.tv.